What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my elderberry syrup. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. For this recipe, I will be using mullein, ginger root, elderflowers, elderberries, spring water, and for some optional additions, you can use dates or limes. So first things first, I wanna make sure that I am starting out with premium ingredients. It is very important to me that I put the best that I can in my body, and especially if I'm combating something currently. And if I am doing something for preventative purposes, I still owe myself premium ingredients. My liquid of choice is going to be spring water, but this is 16 ounces of spring water, and I'm gonna add this to my, to my pan so that it can boil. Then I'm gonna be adding one cup of elderberries. Elderberries have so many benefits. It is an anti-inflammatory, antiviral, anti-influenza, and anti-cancer. It helps remove mucus from the respiratory system, it helps fight colds, flus, allergy, and it binds with the H1N1 virus that prevents it from entering the cells. Elderberries are very high in vitamin C. There are six to 35 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams of fruit, which accounts to up to 60% of the daily recommended intake. Elderberries are also a very good source of phenolic acids. These compounds are powerful antioxidants that can help reduce damage from the oxidative stress in the body. I'm also gonna be adding one tablespoon of ginger root, and ginger root has so many benefits like easing colds and flus, relieving pain, reducing inflammation, and supporting heart health. I'm gonna stir both of these together to make sure that they're completely submerged under the water so that the water can extract all of the medicinal properties from both of these herbs. Then I'm going to cover it with a pot so that the heat can circulate and, and cover it on a very low simmer for 30 minutes. Also, make sure that you are simmering on very low. This is a slow, ritualistic cook. Don't try to rush this. If the heat is too high, the water will absorb too quickly. And if it already did, just add a little bit of water as needed but it might mess with the consistency of the syrup. If at any point during the simmering process you see that the liquid is evaporating too quickly, you can add a little bit of water, but this might mess with the consistency of your syrup. I have to continuously stir to make sure everything is submerged so that you can best extract the chemical components from the plant. Periodically during this 30 minute time frame, I'm going to stir just to make sure that everything is well combined, nothing is sticking to the bottom, and that there's enough water to cover the herb. After 30 minutes, the blend will thicken up. Now it is time to add my infusion herbs. Infusion herbs are more delicate herbs, like flowers or leaves, rather than something a little bit more dense like a root. I do have a full video on the difference between infusion herbs versus decoction herbs, and if you guys are interested in checking out that video, I will go ahead and link it somewhere here. And if you just wanna check it out after you watch the rest of this video, I will go ahead and link it down below in the description box. So just for a general description, infusion herbs cannot be cooked as long as decoction herbs because they are more delicate. The first infusion herb that I'm gonna be adding is two tablespoons of elderflower. Now elderflower comes from the same plant as elderberries, but the flowers contain up to 10 times more flavonoids than the berries. And historically, the flowers and leaves have been used for pain relief, swelling, inflammation, to stimulate the production of urine, and to induce sweating. The bark was used as a diuretic and a laxative. The flowers and fruit and leaves of elderberry plants are excellent sources of antioxidants. The berries and flower of the elderberry are packed with antioxidants that may help boost your immune system. Then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of mullein. Mullein may help treat respiratory conditions like coughs, bronchitis, hoarseness, pneumonia, earaches, flus, chills, fever, allergies, tonsillitis, and sore throat. Mullein also may help with viral infections, asthma, diarrhea, migraines, and joint pain. It is also used as a diuretic to help increase urine output. Now I'm gonna make sure that I'm using the spoon to make sure that herbs are completely submerged under the water. Because these are infusion herbs, I'm gonna turn the heat off and let these steep with the rest of the ingredients. So I cover the herbs so the heat is trapped in to get most extracted from the plants to blend with the rest of the ingredients. 
I let this steep covered for about an hour and if the pan is completely cool, I might turn on the heat for a few seconds so the ingredients stay warm. The longer that the herbs steep at the right temperature, you can extract all the medicinal properties into the water, which allows me to have a better syrup. A lot of herbs can't be heated at certain temperatures for long periods of time because you're actually destroying the medicinal properties from the herbs. So you do want to be careful with how you're heating your herbs. If you guys are looking for any type of guidance with herbal medicine, I would highly suggest getting Alkaline Herbal Medicine. And I will go ahead and link this book down below in the description box. I got it from Amazon. At this point, I have waited an hour. And as you can see, the liquid has thickened up. If it is getting thicker as it is infusing, then that's okay because you're going to be able to extract a lot of liquid from the elderberries because they're going to hold a lot of the liquid inside. After you strain it, it should be a thicker consistency. Now I'm going to be using a strainer to separate. You can find these at Target or Amazon and I will go ahead and link some strainer options down below in the description box. Now I take the pan and pour it into a strainer. You can use a spoon to get any extra juices out of the elderberry. It might not look like you have a lot of liquid, but the elderberries are gonna hold a lot of the liquid. So as you strain it, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using a spoon and applying a lot of pressure to extract any extra juice that the elderberries are holding. And after I use my herbs, I always like to recycle them back in the earth. I can use them in my house plants or I can put them outside in the garden, but always recycle them back into the earth because it is a natural fertilizer. Now, if you want this to be shelf stable and you want it to be stored outside of the refrigerator, you are going to add some type of preservative. Common preservatives that people use are either alcohol or a very, 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 very large amount of sugar. If you do want to opt for more natural preservatives that are more family friendly all the way around, are going to be salt, citric acid, which comes from citrus fruit, grapeseed extract, rosemary extract, lemon juice. My two preservative options would be to add dates or to add lime juice. I'm gonna opt to use lime juice. So I'm gonna just squeeze one whole lime with my juicer. And the lime also has other benefits like reducing inflammation, fighting infection, and improving digestion. I've been trying to follow some of the teachings in this book and he states that he states that, as with oils, you should minimize your consumption of addictive sugar. Date sugar is the best sugar to consume for, from a health point of view. Date sugar is simply dried up ground dates. All of its nutrients are intact except for the water, which controls digestion of its sugar. Pure agave syrup from cactus is good, but its processing can be compromised, can compromise its carbohydrate structure. Um, maple syrup was actually something that was on the list, but since then it's been removed. Um, if you're not plant-based, you might opt for honey because it's said to have a lot of um, beneficial properties as well. I personally don't use any sugar at all and I just use lime juice, but those are some options that you can try out. You can buy date sugar at the store or you can make it at home. This is a recipe from Ty's Conscious Kitchen and you can simply make it by pitting the dates, cooking them in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees, and after they cool, you can put it in a blender and it will get this type of consistency and you can add it to your cereals, um, your baking goods, or even your elderberry syrup. Then I'm gonna pour my lime juice into a bowl and stir, then transfer into mixing it in a glass container that can be airtight. You can use mason jars, other glass containers that you ha have. I like using this bottle because it's easy to just pour into a spoon and have daily or weekly or however I see fit to take my elderberry syrup. I personally like to take my elderberry earlier in the day because a lot of the herbs actually give me energy and I don't like staying up late at night because I'm taking herbs. So I personally take mine earlier in the day. And once again, I keep mine in the refrigerator and then after it's in the refrigerator, I feel like it thickens up even more. It's cold, it's tart, and it's ready to use every morning and I know that it's gonna have a longer shelf life. Yeah, so that concludes my recipe for my elderberry syrup. This is what it looks like a week and a half, two weeks after making it. It's in this bottle. I'm not sure if you can see how thick it is. It's not super liquidy. Well, of course it's liquidy, but it's not runny. And in the morning, 
I just take this spoonful and pour it. I wish you can see how thick. Let me do it higher. It's thick and bubbly. Don't want to get this on my white shirt. You can't see it. So yeah, I would just take a spoonful. It's definitely more tart because I didn't add sugar. This can easily turn into more of a juice-like flavor if you were to add date sugar or honey, depending on your health preferences. It doesn't taste nasty. It's very easy to consume. And doing it like this, you can keep it accessible for the whole family. Elderberry is also safe for kids. There's actually a brand that you can buy from Target called Zarbies, which is a, I wanna say it's an organic or more natural medicine. And a lot of the ingredients for kids have elderberry in it. Um, this is easy. I would, I would say that this would be easy for kids to have because it's a berry. So um, it's more of a tart berry and I'm not sure if it's tart because of the lime that I added. But if you were to add any date sugar or honey or whatever sugar of your choice, I would, I would not use cane sugar. Don't use cane sugar. Use a natural sugar. The three sugars that I would suggest first is date sugar, then agave, and then honey. Don't use white sugar, don't use brown sugar. Use a natural sugar, don't mess it up basically. So that's my elderberry syrup recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. The other things that I added to this help boost your immune system as well. If you guys have your own elderberry syrup recipe, go ahead and put that down so you can share. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next upload. Peace.